Okay, everyone, welcome to Audible Crimes. So, today's story is I've got one on the murder of April Tinsley. So, April Marie Tinsley was born March 18, 1980, and she died April 1st, 1988. She was an eight-year-old girl from Indiana who was kidnapped, raped, and murdered in 1988. Her killer left several anonymous messages and notes in the Fort Wayne area between 1990 and 2004, openly boasting about her, med her murder and threatening to kill again. So, via forensic genealogy, the Fort Wayne Police Department identified her murderer as John Miller in July of 2018. So, just recently, they finally solved this. So, on December 21st, Miller pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 80 years in prison on the charges of child molestation, rape, and murder. April's case was investigated by... The federal, the FBI, and was covered in a television series of on even on America's Most Wanted, Crime Watch Daily, um, the Genetic Detective, and on the Discovery Channel. So, investigation discovery. So about her kidnapping and murder, she was a member of the children's choir at the Faith Methodist Church. And a she was a second grader attending an elementary school. And so on April 1st, 1988, which is was Good Friday, she was playing with two of her friends and they were moving between houses. And Tinsley went back to retrieve her umbrella and then disappeared around 3 o'clock p.m. So around 3 in the afternoon. So John Miller, who later pleaded guilty to murdering Tinsley, said that he planned to kidnap a child, but he had not seen April before abducting her. He said that he asked her to get into his car, and he took her to, to his trailer, where he then raped and killed her. At night, he took her body to a ditch. Oh my God, this is sad. Sad already. I don't like this one. So, Tinsley's mother reported her daughter missing to the police when she did not arrive home for dinner that night. And the initial search for her included 250 Fort Wayne police officers and 50 volunteers. So, that's 300 people if my math's right. A witness later reported seeing a white man in his 30s forcing a little girl believed to be her into his blue pickup. So, a jogger around her, around that, her body on April 4th, 1988, found her in a jet ditch just west of Indiana. So, near the site, investigators found one of her shoes and a sex toy in a shopping bag. Oh, my gosh. That's disgusting. That is, that is disgusting. So, a motorist later reported seeing a blue pickup truck near this site, and Tinsley's autopsy report suggested she had been raped, and then she was strangled to death. The report determined that she had been dead for about one to two days before she was even discovered, and that she was then placed in the ditch four hours after, I mean, sorry, four hours before this discovery. So, two local radio stations established a reward fund on to find who did this to her, but the, nothing came out of that. And so, Tinsley's family held a memorial service for her on April 8th. So, during the investigations, the the early police investigation led authorities to a 30-year, 30 30, 
34-year-old suspect who was charged with child molestation in separate cases but was acquitted of those charges the next month. So, 90 members of this Fort Wayne community formed a volunteer group called April, which is, April means Associated Parents Regional Independent League, which they let... Or later on, they changed it to Abduction, Prevention, Reconnaissance, and Information League, which people have heard of. So, on April 20th, 1988, they went to help the police solve cases, and they've helped a, a lot of police solve cases for these missing children. So, on June 24th, 2005 the family held a press conference at the allen county courthouse asking for any leads in this case and so in june 2009 indiana authorities asked the fbi task force to do a child abduction rapid deployment card to help them solve this murder so they could they still still couldn't solve the murder and plus, they, if they were getting messages from the guy who actually did this, like, I bet you this was constantly on their minds. So, on May 21st, 1990, police found a message on St. Joseph's Township, a barn reading, I killed, I killed an eight-year-old April M. Tinsley, and did you find the other shoe? Ha ha, I will kill again. This message was written with crowns that were found near the barn. So investigators initially believe it could be connected to the murder of a seven-year-old Sarah Jean Bowker, whose body was found on June 14, 1990 in Fort Wayne. But local, local and state police formed a homicide team in April of 1991 to investigate both of these cases. And on August 7, 1991, the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit determined that although Tinsley and her and Bowker's cases were very similar, they were not related. So during the Memorial Day weekend in 2004, four notes were found again on Fort Wayne's area that are believed to have been written by Tinsley's murderer again. So three of these notes were left on the girls' bi on girls' bicycles, and another one was left in someone's mailbox. Three notes were placed in plastic bags along with used condoms, Polaroid pictures of a man's lower body. One of these notes read, "Hi, honey, I've been watching you. I'm the same person that kidnapped and raped and." raped and killed a April Tinsley. You're my next victim. And if you don't report this to the police, I don't see this in the paper tomorrow or on the no local news. I will blow up your house. So the DNA from the condoms matched the police's DNA profile to the suspect, leading investigators to believe that the incidents were connected. So, the condom that were in a plastic bag, DNA matched. So, this dude is for real. He literally did. So, he's going around this whole town. So, obviously, somebody in your town, if the DNA is matching up, obviously, it is somebody in your town. Just walking around, just doing this stuff is just mind-boggling and scary at the same time. Like, I, if I lived in that town, I would be scared. So, in April 2009, a television program called America's Most Wanted ran a segment of her case and asked for tips. And Tinsley case also was featured on Polizon and... Um, Crime Watch Daily. So they all covered an episode of this. So the police's profile of the sub suspect. So soon after this murder, police released a composite sketch of the suspect based on the account of a person who said they 
saw this kidnapper. So on April 26, 1988, police sent DNA samples of Tinsley and five suspects to a private lab in Maryland for profiling, given, but it gave inconclusive results. So the FBI created a profile of the suspect in 2009, describing him as a parental child preferential child sex offender, meaning he has a long-term and persistent sexual child, uh, desire for children. Of course he does. If he's going around sending these messages and sending a dick pic of himself and the DNA's mashing up, that tells you right there something's wrong with this feller. So the profile des described the murderer as a white male in his 40s through 50s, living or working in the Fort Wayne community with low to medium income. I could have told you he lived in the community. If he's walking around leaving notes, he ain't going to come and visit and try to be discovered or whatever if he lived in a whole separate place. There's no way. So, in June 2015, the Virginia-based company Parabon released a snapshot composite sketch of the suspect based on information from his DNA. So, evidently, this company is some high-tech stuff. If now from DNA you can figure out what somebody looks like, that's crazy. So, police released an updated version of his sketch in early May 2016. So, in May 2018, the Fort Wayne Police Department detective sent the sample of the suspect's DNA to forensic company Parabon again, and which used the genealogy website, the GD Match, which that's pretty much what the FBI and everyone, everyone uses to, and I think even Ancestry uses that same kind of sort of thing. But anyways, they sent it so they could get the GED match to identify the, subset, the suspect's relatives. So on July 2nd, 2018, the genealogist C.C. Moore narrowed down the list of suspects to two brothers, including 59-year-old John D. Miller of Indiana, whose neighbors described him as secluded and often very angry. And the police found used condoms in his trash can, then collected DNA that matched the suspect's DNA. So, DNA evidence right there tells you that that is the person who did it right there. John D. Miller of Grabill, Indiana, or Grappel, Grappel, Indiana. So, detectives approached Miller at his house on July 15th, 2018 and asked him to come talk with them at the police station. After advising him of his rights, though, investigator, investigators then asked him if he knew why they wanted to talk to him. And according to the police, he, he replied straight up, April Tinsley. During an interview at the police station, he confessed to the murders saying he abducted her, raped her, and choked her to death in his trailer. So officials then charged him with murder, child molestation, and confinement, and he pleaded not guilty in a court hearing on July 19th, 2018. Why would you plead not guilty when you done confessed to this murder? And you've been giving uh, notes to everyone around you and everything else. Your DNA matched, unless your brother is like your twin or something. But if he already knew why he was getting interrogated or asked questions, he already knew what he was in there for means you're guilty. So I, if I was you, I wouldn't be pleading not guilty if I was guilty. If you're guilty, plead guilty. So, on December 7th, 2018, Miller changed his plea to guilty. Yeah, I would too, because you're going to get a lesser charge versus saying you're not guilty. You're going to probably get to max. But, of course, 
these people already should get the the life in prison personally. So he changed his plea to guilty, saying he raped her and strangled her with his bare hands. Wow. His bare hands. Like, that's got to be awful. Just to sit and watch someone die like that. That's just... I don't know how people do this stuff, man. I do not know. So he was a, he was sentenced to 80 years in prison, 50 years for murder, and 30 for the child molestation. So he'll probably be there until he dies, which is good. That's where you should be because you should not be allowed to get out. So after the sentencing, since, sentencing he was housed at Indiana's Department of Correction in Plainfield. And on January 16, 2019, he was moved then to the Newcastle, Newcastle Correctional Facility. So, Miller's earliest possible release date is in 2058. And he would be 99 years old. So, I do not think this guy is, you going to die before you're 99. Very seldom do people live that long. Very seldom. So, the aftermath of all this was horrible. Because in April 2015, in that neighborhood of Fort Wayne, construction started on mem a memorial dedicated to her memory. And it was called April's Garden. Oh, that's so sweet. On July 28th, 2018, a, a memorial walk starting at this garden was held in honor of April. Now, that's good. But to me, the aftermath of, okay, I found out what, who did this to my daughter, but my daughter is still not here. I just... Losing a child, I think, is the hardest thing anyone's probably got to go through. I know my mom did it with my brother, and I know I'm just his sister, but it was hard on me. So, I, could, I just can't imagine how a parent feels if that happened to them. I just, you can't imagine. And you can say, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss, but I'm like, when people try to t tell me that when it happened, I'm like, just be quiet. Just just let me cry. Just hug me. Please don't say a word. So, April Tinsley's mother held a balloon launch at April's Garden on April 4th, 2018. The service was in remembrance of her daughter and other child victims of violence. The following day at the elementary school, a magnolia tree and bench were formally dedicated to her memory. This dedication was followed by a candlelight vigil. Oh, it's so so sweet, even though it's hard. In May 2019, nine investigators who have worked to secure the arrest and conviction of April's murder became recipients of the National Association of Police Organizations, so NAPO, um, which is a national, national Policing Award. So this award was in recognition of their tireless co collaborative efforts conducted over the span of 30 years to see April's murderer finally brought to justice. 30 years is a long time. And then that guy was free for 30 years. I bet you he done it at some point. These investigators were from the Indiana State Police, the FBI, the Allen County Sheriff's Department, and the Fort Wayne Police Department. So NAPO heralded them as being among the most eminent and dedicated officers in America. Well, that's it for this one, everyone. Leave your comments down below what you think about this story and or any information that I didn't cover that maybe you want to know. And that's it for this one. Peace.